Hello everyone, my name is Kent Weir. Today we're going to talk about Enterprise Power Apps and Power Automate Governance. This is part two of a three-part series. If you missed part one, go ahead, scroll down, go into the video description where I'll include a link to that piece of this puzzle. Now, in case you're wondering where this content originated from, I recently spoke at the Microsoft Calgary office. I was at an event sponsored by Microsoft Canada and Fidelity Factory where they asked me to speak about security and governance for the Power Platform. Due to the length of content, I decided to break it up into a three-part series. And here we go, this is part two. So let's go. In part one, we talked about how to secure your environment and tenant. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about monitor. How can you monitor your environments and your tenant to ensure you understand what your users are doing and being able to identify any behaviors that conflict with any of your policies that exist within your organization so that you can go ahead and remediate those situations. The first thing I wanna to talk to you about is Office 365 logging. Now, this is really important. Microsoft provides Security and Compliance Center as part of Office 365 where different services can publish events to that service. And Power Apps and Flow is no different from that regard. And so what will happen is as these events occur inside of Power Apps and Flow, they get recorded into this Security and Compliance Center for 90 days. Now, Office 365 makes this platform open so that other services can consume this data. For example, you might have a SIM, a Security Information Event Management System that subscribes to the security events, but you can also have other systems subscribe to these events including Power Automate. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now you might be asking, what are the events that are captured as part of the Security and Compliance Center? Well, when it comes to Power Automate, sorry, this is an old slide, Microsoft Flow, we will see whenever someone creates a flow, edits a flow, deletes a flow, changes permissions, or starts or renews a paid trial. So this is obviously good to know um, whenever these events occur. Power Apps, they added support for this later than Power Automate did, but it is just as good, if not better. And so we have events such as when a person creates an app, publishes an app, deletes an app, etc. Now, what I really like, and you will actually see this a little bit later when we talk about the Center of Excellence Starter Kit, is that when a person launches an app, that is recorded as well. So that's a great way to track usage of your applications. And that's how the Center of Excellence Toolkit or Starter Kit will actually be able to tell you how, how often people are opening up a specific app, which is great. So there's additional events being captured, such as permissions and when an app is being marked as a hero app for broader promotion inside of an organization. Now I talked about how you can subscribe to events. And so here's an example of how you can do that, where you can go ahead and establish a webhook that will subscribe to events inside of the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center. And then what you can have is a flow that is basically providing that webhook infrastructure. It's providing at least that subscription for the webhook. And then what you're able to do is to go interrogate those events to see if there's any behaviors that you're not happy about. So for example, let's say that you want to ensure that users are not using the forward and email action. So we'll talk about, we've talked about DLP already as part of this three-part series, but you'll notice when we talk about DLP, it's at the connector level, not so much at the action level. And so forward and email is an action that belongs to the Office 365 email connector. So we can't just turn off that action, but what we can do is we can detect when this action is actually being used. So for example, we might have someone that's creating a flow in environment A, or even editing a flow in environment B. And whenever those events occur, we want an administrator to have a flow that could be running in environment C, it doesn't really matter. And it's going to then go ahead and subscribe to these create or edit events. Then what the administrator can do is can actually go ahead and retrieve the flow definition for those specific flows that were either created or edited and then actually go and check to see if there's an action that matches our forward an email action. If so, that administrator can send out an email 
to the user indicating that this is not a permitted activity and actually go ahead and stop that flow from executing further requests. And then of course, this could all be wrapped up in an approval because you may want to ensure that you're not say, turning off a VIP's flow, uh, but you can certainly wrap this around an approval and an admin can actually detect that, okay, this is a, you know, an important person, it's probably for legitimate purposes, I'm just gonna go talk to them first, as opposed to taking out the hammer and whacking them over the head with it without at least having that conversation. Another thing we can talk about is analytics. And in this case, we're only gonna talk about admin analytics. And so these analytics are available from the new Power Platform Admin Center. And here's the link here, aka.ms slash PPAC. And using these analytics, you're gonna get some insight. These are out of the box insights that you can retrieve related to CDS, the consumption of your CDS environment, power apps, you know, how many people are using apps, uh, then flows, you can check to see how often are flows being created, the frequency of their run, what connectors are being used, flows being shared, and that sort of information. It is important to know that the data is only stored for 28 days, and the, daily, the data is actually refreshed. There's a, a typo on this slide. It's actually up to every three hours. It's not daily, so it is more frequent, but do note it's not real time. Now, in order to access the admin analytics, you do need to be either a Power Platform admin, a global admin, or an environment admin. And actually, you can only see the environments for that for those that you have access to. So we're not circumventing any of the existing security constraints that have been put in place. Do note that Maker Analytics is also part of Power Automate, but for the purposes of this lecture, we're not gonna include it because they're not so much about admin and security, it's more about user analytics and to determine whether or not their flows are healthy and how frequently they're running. Now diving down a little bit deeper, double clicking into the analytics, here are a couple screenshots that exist that are related to the Power Automate side of the, the house. Now it is important to understand that these analytics are useful for cybersecurity you know, whether you're an architect or an operations analyst, so you can actually get some insight in terms of what your users are doing. But the other thing you should think about is what about change management? What if people are doing good things with Power Automate? Do you want to identify those people and then ensure that they have the resources in order to do more? Because at the end of the day, if someone's doing something good for your company, don't you actually want them to do more of it? I know me personally, um, I like bonuses. So if a company has bonuses, and other people are able to contribute to the bottom line and improve the profitability of an organization, we should probably look at uh, how we can embrace those people and not try to constrain them. Another concern that comes up often with security and governance is those runaway flows. So people are concerned about, oh, an end user is not gonna know what they're doing, they're gonna create this flow, it's gonna create a bunch of errors, it's gonna create a big mess, and it's a waste of company resources. How do I detect when this happens? One way is through the runaway flows, or actually rather the errors tab, errors report, and this is where you can detect those runaway flows. So for example, I was guilty of this. I was looking at the errors one time, and I'm like, wow, like this flow has failed a lot. And sure enough, it ended up being my own flow. Now, it wasn't out of pure negligence from my perspective. It happened to be, in this case, something related to the trigger, so it wasn't actually surfacing so much inside of the flow itself, but it ended up being a connection issue. So once I detected this, I could go in and actually fix my connection for that trigger, and then the error stopped. But once again, this gives you some oversight across the environment. And the other thing that's happened, it has been grayed out here uh, because of privacy, but what you do get is you get the flow creator's email. So you can actually reach out to these people if they actually have a flow that is run away and there's a bunch of errors. So this is actually a great feature so that you can actually action that insight as opposed to just be like, oh, we've got a bunch of failures. Lastly, connectors is a really important report. Naturally, people are concerned like, oh, the sky is falling, people are gonna do crazy stuff. But it's kind of like, how do you measure that? And this gives you one way to measure it. And it's like, we always talk about having making decisions based upon data. Well, this actually gives you data to let you know if you actually have issues or not. Because I think there's a lot of like fear, uncertainty, doubt when it comes to the power platform and people always assume the worst. But how do you, do you have data to support your position? Well, now you can have data. And from my experience, you definitely don't see as many 
people out there doing rogue activities as you might think. This, but this will give you the opportunity to see who is using that, say, Dropbox or that box or that consumer-based service that you don't want to. Once again, you can figure out uh, who they are by their email address so you can reach out to them, which is great. Another aspect back to the OCM side of the house is that, hey, if people have a lot of interest in Planner or in SharePoint, well, maybe we need to do more training sessions so that we can scale that knowledge. Maybe we need to talk to those people and say, hey, what are you doing that's so unique here that's providing you such benefit? And hey, would you mind talking at one of our events to these other business groups? So that, because there's nothing like having it, having them here right from the people that are seeing the benefit as opposed to sort of the service provider that's sitting in the middle. So the connectors report is another one that you definitely want to check out. Now, another thing that you can do is leverage the management connectors and PowerShell commandlets as reporting tools. So here's a, a link to the PowerShell commandlets if you're not familiar with those. And once again, like the, the features are fairly symmetric between these connectors and PowerShell. It's more about using the tool that you're most comfortable with. Some people love PowerShell and that's great, you should use it. Me personally, I'm more of an API kind of a guy, so I prefer using the management connectors where I can orchestrate these different calls through a Power Automate flow. So it's really up to you, but you have access to a tremendous amount of information by just using these tools. Now, underneath the hood, they're using the same APIs that are actually in the product. So you're actually taking advantage of those same capabilities that exist inside of the admin console and inside of the maker portals, and but you can actually automate them yourselves through these tools, which is fantastic. And it's, it's a great opportunity for you to craft or build a governance story that works for your organization. I think that sometimes people think, well, everything needs to be out of the box and every organization is gonna run it the same way, and it's just not true. Organizations have different needs, but using these tools like PowerShell and the management connectors is you can now create that governance solution that addresses your key concerns, as opposed to trying to boil the ocean and trying to get everything into the product. Now, here's a couple examples of the tools and how you can go about using these tools to improve your monitoring visibility. So number one is PowerShell. Go ahead and download this script. This script will actually extract CSV-based information that allows you to understand what's going on inside of your tenant. You can then take these CSV files and ingest it into, say, tools like Power BI, or if you're using Splunk, or you have other security monitoring tools, you can actually go ahead and load this data into the tool of your choice and run this on, say, a daily basis and extract that information that you need. Or alternatively, you can also take advantage of templates that exist inside of Power Automate that use these management connectors so that you can get visibility into the activities going on in your tenant. Now though, the ones that I like to use the most is the, the template I like the, the most is the one that's been highlighted here, get list of new Power Apps, flows, and connectors. So if you wanna just have a cursory look of what's going on every day in your environment, you can actually go ahead and use this template. So I look at it every day, I see who's creating flows, who's creating Power Apps, and then what are the new connectors that have shown up inside of my environments. When I see new connectors, I can then make a choice whether or not I wanna go change or modify my DLP policies because connectors are gonna land in a default data group, which for me is the no business data allowed. So if I have a Microsoft connector, say there's a new say Office 365 connector available, I'm gonna to wanna to move that into my business data bucket so that it can be used with the rest of the Office 365 connectors. Now, it's important to know that this is a great tool for your security people. You know, if people have concerns about what's going on, well, subscribe them to this email, right? So at the end of the, this flow, it's gonna send out a digest of all of the information that's been aggregated, include your security people, and they'll now get insight. And my experience is that people tend to name things using good descriptive terms. So I can see when you know people are trying to do say team productivity or personal productivity or you know trying to create that like out of office solution or some sort of tracking app. And those are apps that we do want our sort of citizen developers to be building, but they're giving us some good insights. So highly recommend using these templates because they are quick and simple ways to get access to that information that you're interested that you're interested in. 
Now, another thing to consider is, and once again, this is kind of going back into that OCM side of the, the house as opposed to the cybersecurity side, is when you do have applications, power apps that you're rolling out to your end users, do you want to know if they're being used? Do you want to know if, say, a new app is successful or not? Well, how would you be able to do that otherwise unless you built some custom telemetry, but you don't need to do that anymore. Certainly not with the admin analytics and, and obviously the center of excellence. Starter Kit also has more options in this area too, but this is an out of box experience where you can actually see when people are launching your applications. And so this was something that uh, we had run, you know, earlier in my organization where we could see that we rolled out an app and basically it went live on the 16th. And so we, on the 15th, we started to roll it out because we had an event where it was going to be used. And then we could actually see people, okay, installing the app, trying it, kicking it, kicking the tires. And then we could see on day one of the event, you know, that we had 50 people that were using it. And then we wanted to actually get more people using it. And so what we did is we did some campaigns inside of the app itself to drive some awareness and drive some traffic to the app. And then what we did see is that 40 more people had went and used the app on the subsequent day. So these are great tools out of the box. It gives you some cursory information about what is going on inside of your environment. So that concludes part two, which is all about monitoring. And in part three, which I'll try to get out in the following week or so, we are going to then talk about alerting and acting upon that information. So thanks for checking out this video and I hope to see you in part three of this series. Take care.